Hello, family Lea Kumalo here and welcome to another episode of Great Black Historic Peoples of African Descent. Today we present the great Kimite Pharaoh, King Soyure, the master of the high seas, who developed the Egyptian navy to grand heights. Let's continue family. So let's begin with this Cometican king of Memphis Sohure, also Sohuare, meaning he who is close to Re, was a pharaoh of ancient Egypt and the second ruler of the 5th dynasty, 2465 a 2325 BC. He reigned for about 12 years in the early 25th century BC during the Old Kingdom period. Sohure's reign marks the political and cultural high point of the 5th dynasty. He was probably the son of his predecessor Yuzakaf with Queen Nefohitips II and was in turn succeeded by his son Nefohayake Kokai. During Sohure's rule, Egypt had important trade relations with the Levantine coast. Sohure launched several naval expeditions to modern-day Lebanon to procure cedar trees, slaves, and exotic items. His reign may have witnessed the flourishing of the Egyptian navy, which included a high seas fleet as well as specialized racing boats. Let's continue. Sahur's reign may have been a time of development for the Egyptian navy. His expeditions to Punt and Byblos demonstrate the existence of a high seas navy and reliefs from his mortuary complex are described by Shelley Watchman as the first definite depictions of seagoing ships in Egypt, some of which must have been 100 cubits long, see a 50 m, 170 feet. Because of this, Sahur has been credited by past scholars with establishing the Egyptian navy. It is recognized today that this is an overstatement, fragmentary reliefs from Yuzakaf's temple depict numerous boats, while a high seas navy must have existed as early as the 3rd dynasty. The oldest known sea harbor, Wadi al Jaf on the Red Sea was operating under Khufu. Finally, there is the distinct possibility that some of the reliefs are copied from earlier examples. Nonetheless, Sahur remains the earliest known ruler to have depicted, and thus possibly made use of, sea power for transporting troops over the Mediterranean Sea, to Syria. The extensive nautical scenes from Sahur's mortuary complex are sufficiently detailed to show that specialized racing boats for the military and perhaps for ceremonial training were built at the time. They also give the earliest depiction of specific rope users aboard ships, such as that of a hogging truss. They permit precise estimates regarding shipbuilding, for example indicating that the midship freeboard for seagoing vessels was of 1 meter 3.3 feet and that the masts employed at the time were bipodal, resembling an inverted Y. Further rare depictions include the king standing in the stern of a sailing boat with a highly decorated sail, and one of only two reliefs from ancient Egypt showing men aboard a ship paddling in a wave pattern, possibly during a race. During Sahur's time on the throne, Egypt had important trade relations with the Levantine coast. Sahur launched several naval expeditions to modern-day Lebanon to procure cedar trees, people, possibly slaves, and exotic items. We thank you for watching this historic story of a great African king, Sahure. Goodbye, Amani na apendo wa familia. Thanks, family for watching another episode of Great Black Historic Peoples of African Descent. Until next time, peace and love.